chapter 11, Kingdom Prayer, Luke 11 verses 1 to 2, KJV, And it came to pass that, as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, When ye pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. When ye pray, they wanted to pray like John taught his disciples, but Jesus wanted them to pray for their kingdom to come down from heaven to the earth. Luke 11 verses 3 to 4, KJV, Give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive every one that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thy kingdom come, this was a kingdom prayer for saints awaiting the kingdom to come down from heaven. It did not come because they rejected their king and cried out for him to be crucified. Their kingdom would be postponed till a later date. Give us this day our daily bread. The next event on the calendar for Israel was the time of wrath spoken of by John the Baptist and all the prophets. Then Israel's kingdom would come, but prior to that they were to pray this prayer for food and protection from the tempter, the Antichrist, during that terrible time. God will answer that prayer in the time of Jacob's trouble when he feeds them in the wilderness for three and a half years. Revelation 12 verse 6 KJV And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive every one that is indebted to us. They were to forgive in order to be forgiven. We are to forgive today because we already are forgiven. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. In the time of Jacob's trouble, there will be great temptation to take the mark of the beast. God will deliver those from this temptation if they pray as they should at that time. We are not to pray the same way today. Paul teaches the members of the body of Christ how to pray in this present dispensation in Romans to Philemon. Luke 11 verses 5 to 10, KJV, And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend, and shall go unto him at midnight, and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine in his journey is come to me, and I have nothing to set before him? And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not, the door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed, I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. And I say unto you, Ask, and it shall be given you, Seek, and ye shall find, Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Matthew 7 verse 7 KJV Ask, and it shall be given you, seek, and ye shall find, knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Ask, and it shall be given you. This is a promise to kingdom saints, it is not a promise to you and me today. Give the Holy Spirit. Luke 11 verses 11 to 13, KJV, If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Give the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was first given to Israel on the day of Pentecost when they were praying in the upper room. Acts 2 verse 38 as well. The baptism with the Holy Spirit was for Israel at a specific time in history to endue them with power to be bold witnesses. Today we are baptized by the Holy Spirit into the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 13 KJV for by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. Luke 11 verses 14 to 20, KJV, And he was casting out a devil, and it was dumb. And it came to pass, when the devil was gone out, the dumb spake, and the people wondered. 
But some of them said, He casteth out devils through Beelzebub the chief of the devils. And others, tempting him, sought of him a sign from heaven. But he, knowing their thoughts, said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and a house divided against a house falleth. If Satan also be divided against himself, how shall his kingdom stand? Because ye say that I cast out devils through Beelzebub. And if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore shall they be your judges. But if I with the finger of God cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God is come upon you. The finger of God, this is the Spirit of God. Matthew 12 verse 28 and compare with verse 20. The kingdom of God is come upon you, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Matthew 3 verse 2. A strong man. Luke 11 verses 21 to 22, KJV, When a strong man armed keepeth his palace, his goods are in peace, but when a stronger than he shall come upon him, and overcome him, he taketh from him all his armor wherein he trusted, and divideth his spoils. Matthew 12 verse 44, KJV. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out, and when he is come, he findeth the empty, swept, and garnished a stronger than he, Jesus Christ. Luke 11 verses 23 to 25, KJV, He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and finding none, he saith, I will return unto my house whence I came out. And when he cometh, he findeth it swept and garnished. Matthew 12 verse 29 KJV Or else how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man? And then he will spoil his house. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest. A devil that was cast out of a person in those days could not just go where he pleased. Satan had a specific place he expected his minions to operate, and they would not have any rest if they were not doing what Satan wanted them to be doing and being where he wanted them to be. I will return unto my house once I came out. This is the house of Israel. Do you remember the legion of devils request to Jesus in Mark 5? Mark 5 verse 10, And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. He findeth it swept and garnished, Jesus, the stronger man, came to Israel and swept it clean of devils, by casting them out. Luke 11 verse 26, KJV, Then goeth he, and taketh to him seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in, and dwell there, and the last state of that man is worse than the first. The last state of that man is worse than the first. Just because Jesus cast devils out of every Israelite he came across, does not mean that they all became believers. The consequences for them not believing in him as their Christ was seven times worse than before he had shown them mercy. Over and over again, Israel was warned first by God through Moses, and later by his prophets, that God will punish them seven times more for their sins if they would not hearken unto God. Leviticus 26 verse 18, And if ye will not yet for all this hearken unto me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. Jesus is God in human flesh, and Israel did not hear him, and they were punished for their unbelief. They blasphemed the Holy Spirit by attributing his miracles to the power of Satan instead of the Holy Spirit. This was the unpardonable sin. It cannot be committed today in the dispensation of grace. Luke 11 verses 27 to 28, KJV, And it came to pass, as he spake these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice, and said unto him, Blessed is the womb that bare thee, and the paps which thou hast sucked. But he said, Ye rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God, and keep it. Ye rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God, and keep it. Mary was not traveling with Jesus until his crucifixion. Most of Jesus' own family members were not followers of him until after his resurrection. The Sign of the Prophet Jonah Luke 11 verses 29 to 32, KJV, And when the people were gathered thick together, he began to say, This is an evil generation, they seek a sign, and there shall no sign be given it 
but the sign of Jonas the prophet. For as Jonas was a sign unto the Ninevites, so shall also the Son of Man be to this generation. The Queen of the South shall rise up in the judgment with the men of this generation and condemn them, for she came from the utmost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and behold, a greater than Solomon is here. The men of Nineveh shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Jonas, and behold, a greater than Jonas is here. How was the prophet Jonah assigned to the Ninevites? What does a sign do? It educates you about something. Jonah educated the people of Nineveh that God was going to destroy the people for their wickedness. Jonah did not go to Nineveh preaching repentance, he himself did not want to go to the Ninevites. He even waited to see if God would follow through with the destruction he had promised and which Jonah had proclaimed. God did not, and that was his worst fear. That would make Jonah look like a false prophet to Israel. Jesus was called a false prophet and his healings were attributed to Satan. He will be a witness personally against that generation who had not only his words preached to him, but every prophecy written about his first coming fulfilled in front of their very eyes. The little flock did believe, and the kingdom will then be taken away from the unbelieving majority in the nation and it will be given to the little flock of believers. Luke 12 verse 32 Jesus is greater than Solomon and Jonah together, and yet two different nations heard them and believed, but Israel would not believe a greater witness because of their wickedness. Luke 11 verses 33 to 36, KJV, No man, when he hath lighted a candle, putteth it in a secret place, neither under a bushel, but on a candlestick, that they which come in may see the light. The light of the body is the eye, therefore, when thy night is single, thy whole body also is full of light, but when thy night is evil, thy body also is full of darkness. Take heed therefore that the light which is in thee be not darkness. If thy whole body therefore be full of light, having no part dark, the whole shall be full of light, as when the bright shining of a candle doth give thee light. Jesus said himself that he was the light of the world, and if a man were to believe in him, he would not walk in darkness. Israel as a whole was walking in darkness. Leviticus 26 makes it clear that Israel was in darkness and that they needed to repent of violating the covenant they made with God at Sinai, and if they would have, they would have recognized their Messiah. Woe unto you Pharisees! Luke 11 verses 37 to 51, KJV, And as he spake, a certain Pharisee besought him to dine with him, and he went in and sat down to meet. And when the Pharisee saw it, he marveled that he had not first washed before dinner. And the Lord said unto him, Now do ye Pharisees make clean the outside of the cup and the platter, but your inward part is full of ravening and wickedness. Ye fools! Did not he that made that which is without make that which is within also? But rather give alms of such things as ye have, and behold, all things are clean unto you. But woe unto you, Pharisees! For ye tithe mint and rue and all manner of herbs and pass over judgment and the love of God, these ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. Woe unto you, Pharisees! For ye love the uppermost seats in the synagogues, and greetings in the markets. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye are as graves which appear not, and the men that walk over them are not aware of them. Then answered one of the lawyers, and said unto him, Master, thus saying thou reproachest us also. And he said, Woe unto you also, ye lawyers! For ye laid men with burdens grievous to be borne, and ye yourselves touch not the burdens with one of your fingers. Woe unto you! For ye build the sepulchres of the prophets, and your fathers killed them. Truly ye bear witness that ye allow the deeds of your fathers, for they indeed killed them, and ye build their sepulchres. Therefore also said the wisdom of God, I will send them prophets and apostles, and some of them they shall slay and persecute, that the blood of all the prophets, which was shed from the foundation of the world, may be required of this generation, from the blood of Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, which perished between the altar and the temple, verily I say unto you, it shall be required of this generation. From the blood of Abel, Cain slew him in Genesis 1-3. 
The blood of Zacharias. The story of Zacharias being killed is found in the last book of the Old Testament in the Hebrew Bible in 2 Chronicles 24 verse 20. Luke 11 verses 52 to 54, KJV, Woe unto you, lawyers! For ye have taken away the key of knowledge, ye entered not in yourselves, and them that were entering in ye hindered. And as he said these things unto them, the scribes and the Pharisees began to urge him vehemently, and to provoke him to speak of many things, laying wait for him, and seeking to catch something out of his mouth, that they might accuse him. Keys unlock things, and these lawyers had taken away the key of knowledge that would unlock the scriptures to the average person to find the Messiah. They did this by all the traditions they had placed above the word of God which blinded the people from the truth about what the Messiah would be like. They couldn't recognize the Messiah when he was standing right in front of them because they were blinded to the truths in God's word thanks to the lawyers. This stern warning should have caused the lawyers to rethink their ways, but for many it had no effect. Chapter 12 Fear Not Little Flock Luke 12 verse 1, KJV In the meantime, when there were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people, insomuch that they trod one upon another, he began to say unto his disciples first of all, Beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. An innumerable multitude of people, this multitude is made up of two groups. Those who were following him completely, and those who were there for the miracles. His disciples, these are those who sold all that they had and followed him completely. They are later called the little flock in verse 32. Luke 12 verses 2 to 3, KJV, For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light, and that which ye have spoken in the ear in closets shall be proclaimed upon the house tops. The Pharisees were hypocrites because they said one thing publicly, but privately they expected from the people the very things they themselves would not give to God. Luke 12 verses 4 to 5, KJV, And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear, fear him, which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Yeah, I say unto you, fear him. My friends, Jesus calls those that follow him his friends. I will forewarn you who ye shall fear. The people lived in fear of the religious lawyers, Pharisees, Sadducees, and rabbis. Contrast this with the first two words of verse 34. Those very same people loved to have the people fearing them, because then they could get them to do whatever they wanted. These verses speak of Jews alive in Jesus' day, who wanted to enter their kingdom. Luke 12 verses 57 to 59. Luke 12 verses 6 to 9, KJV, Are not five sparrows sold for two farthings, and not one of them is forgotten before God? But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Also, I say unto you, Whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God, but he that deneath me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. Whosoever shall confess me before men, they needed to confess that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God. Not just when their enemies threatened them with death for doing so, but they were to go and follow him and preach who he was to others. Matthew 16 verse 16 Luke 12 verse 10 KJV And whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him, but unto him that blasphemeth against the Holy Ghost it shall not be forgiven. Blasphemeth against the Holy Ghost, this is the unpardonable sin. There was no forgiveness for it under the dispensation of the law. Saul of Tarsus was a blasphemer, and under the program that Israel was under up to that point there was no forgiveness of sins for blasphemy. The only way Saul of Tarsus could have ever been saved was if the dispensation of grace began, and it did. The teachings of the dispensation of grace were dispensed to Paul after he was saved to dispense them to us. Luke 12 verses 11 to 12 KJV, and when they bring you unto the synagogues, and unto magistrates, and powers, take ye no thought how or what thing ye shall answer, or what ye shall say, for the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what ye ought to say. 
The Holy Ghost shall teach them in the same hour what you ought to say. The Holy Ghost is not talking to you today in the dispensation of grace. This is a kingdom practice where the Holy Ghost would empower his witnesses and give them the words to say to testify on God's behalf. This is how Peter and Stephen received the messages they preached in Acts 2 and 7 to 8. Beware of covetousness. Luke 12 verses 13 to 15, KJV, And one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother, that he divide the inheritance with me. And he said unto him, Man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? And he said unto them, Take heed, and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. Beware of covetousness, in the tribulation period people will be required by God to sell all they have and to distribute to the poor just as Jesus required in his day. Luke 12 verse 33 Luke 12 verses 16 to 21, KJV, And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully, and he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? And he said, This will I do, I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years, take thy knees, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee, then who shall those things be, which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself, and is not rich toward God. Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee, during the tribulation period it will be very hard for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 19 verses 16 to 30 Luke 12 verses 22 to 31, KJV, And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, neither for the body, what ye shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feedeth them, how much more are ye better than the fowls? And which of you with taking thought can add to his stature one cubit? If ye then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Consider the lilies how they grow, they toil not, they spin not, and yet I say unto you, that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothe the grass, which is today in the field, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? And seek not ye what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take no thought for you life, they were not to worry about how they would survive as God would take care of them in those days. Little Flock Luke 12 verse 32 KJV Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Fear not, Jesus tells the recipients of the future kingdom what was ahead of them in tribulation period. They are to fear God instead of the Antichrist. Little flock, the remnant of Jewish people that have believed the gospel of the kingdom that Jesus is the Christ. They are the nation that will be given the kingdom because they are bringing forth the fruit thereof. Matthew 21 verse 43 It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. The kingdom was promised to Israel, but only believing Israel who are circumcised in their hearts will have the kingdom given to them. Unbelieving Israel will have it taken from them and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. Matthew 21 verse 43 Believing Israel aka the little flock Luke 12 verses 33 to 34 KJV, sell that ye have and give alms, provide yourselves bags which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupteth. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Sell that ye have, this is kingdom living. You are not Israel under these commandments today. If you sell all that you have and give it away, you will be penniless and you will be disobeying what God has dispensed to you today through Paul. 
Romans 11 verse 13 KJV. For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. Bags which wax not old, eternal rewards. Luke 12 verse 35 KJV, let your loins be girded about, and your lights burning. Your loins girded, Exodus 12 verse 11 KJV, and thus shall ye eat it, with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. 1 Kings 18 verse 46 KJV, And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Luke 12 verse 36 KJV, And ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord, when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Men that wait for their Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. When he will return from the wedding, Matthew 22. When he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately, Revelation 3 verse 20 KJV, Behold, I stand at the door, and knock, if any man hear my voice, and open the door, I will come in to him, and will sup with him, and he with me. Luke 12 verses 37 to 38, KJV, Blessed are those servants, whom the Lord when he cometh shall find watching. Verily I say unto you, that he shall gird himself, and make them to sit down to meet, and will come forth and serve them. And if he shall come in the second watch, or come in the third watch, and find them so, blessed are those servants. Blessed are those servants, whom the Lord when he cometh shall find watching. Matthew 24 verses 42 to 43, Mark 13 verses 33 to 37, and Luke 21 verse 36. The second watch, 9 to 12 p.m. The third watch, 12 to 3 a.m. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 6 KJV. Therefore let us not sleep, as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Revelation 3 verse 3 KJV, Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast, and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Luke 12 verse 39 KJV, And this know, that if the goodman of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched, and not have suffered his house to be broken through. The goodman of the house, it is those that heard the preaching of the kingdom, but they were not busy watching for his return. They were busy with the cares of this world instead of laying up for themselves treasures in heaven. The thief, Jesus Christ said he was coming as a thief in the night to those who were not watching at the end of the tribulation period. Luke 12 verse 40, KJV, Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when ye think not. The Son of Man cometh at an hour when ye think not. These verses are not talking about the rapture of the body of Christ. They are speaking of when Jesus comes back physically and visibly seven years later. The mystery of the rapture was not revealed until it was dispensed unto Paul, the apostle of the Gentiles years later. Luke 12 verse 41, KJV, Then Peter said unto him, Lord, speakest thou this parable unto us, or even to all? Speakest thou this parable unto us? The parable was for two different groups of people, the faithful and the unfaithful stewards, called the people in verse 54. Luke 12 verse 42, KJV, And the Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward, whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household, to give them their portion of meat in due season? That faithful and wise servant, the little flock will become rulers in the kingdom. Luke 19 verses 11 to 27. His Lord shall make ruler over his household. This is their reward in the kingdom to rule and reign with him. Matthew 24 verses 45 to 47, 25 colon 21 23 and Luke 19 verses 11 to 27. To give them their portion of meat in due season, this speaks about their reward in the future kingdom for their being faithful stewards during the time of tribulation. Matthew 24 verse 45, Luke 12 verses 43 to 46, KJV, Blessed is that servant, whom his Lord when he cometh shall find so doing. Of a truth I say unto you, that he will make him ruler over all that he hath. 
But and if that servant say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to beat the men servants and maidens, and to eat and drink, and to be drunken, the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him, and at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in sunder, and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. Cut him asunder, to tear in pieces. Matthew 24 verse 51 and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. Matthew 24 verse 51, Luke 12 verse 47, KJV, and that servant, which knew his Lord's will, and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. That servant, which knew his Lord's will, they heard the preaching of the kingdom, and some of them even followed Jesus for a while, but they quit for some reason. This is not speaking about us in the dispensation of grace. Beaten with many stripes, these people are cast into hell and punished in accordance with their sin. Luke 12 verse 48, KJV, But he that knew not, and did commit things worthy of stripes, shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall be much required, and to whom men have committed much, of him they will ask the more. Worthy of stripes, these people are also punished for their sin, but there is a fair measure to their punishment in hell. 2 Samuel 7 verse 14 KJV I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men, and with the stripes of the children of men. Luke 12 verse 49 KJV I am come to send fire on the earth, and what will I, if it be already kindled? I am come to send fire on the earth, Matthew 3 verses 10 to 12. If it be already kindled, this is possibly a reference to those who have heard the gospel of the kingdom and they had died after having been disobedient to it. Luke 12 verse 50, KJV, But I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how am I straightened till it be accomplished? I have a baptism to be baptized with, his death, and martyrdom. Matthew 20 verses 20 to 24 and Mark 10 verses 35 to 41. And how am I straightened till it be accomplished? It means to be vexed or pressed concerning something. Luke 12 verses 51 to 53, KJV, Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth? I tell you, nay, but rather division, for from henceforth there shall be five in one house divided, three against two, and two against three. The father shall be divided against the son, and the son against the father, the mother against the daughter, and the daughter against the mother, the mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. That division of light from darkness was a good division, whereas all five here were in darkness before, the gospel of the kingdom brought light to them which believed, so not all of them would perish. Judgment is coming. Luke 12 verses 54 to 57, KJV, And he said also to the people, When ye see a cloud rise out of the west, straightway ye say, There cometh a shower, and so, it is. And when ye see the south wind blow, ye say, There will be heat, and it cometh to pass. Ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky and of the earth, but how is it that ye do not discern this time? Yeah. And why even of yourselves judge ye not what is right? The people, these are the hypocrites in verse 56 who hear the word of God and do not follow it. How is it that ye do not discern this time, because of the urgency of the time in which Jesus came as the kingdom was at hand, Christ expected his followers to sell all that they had and to come and follow him? Why even of yourselves judge ye not what is right? They should have been doing his will once they heard his preaching, but many were not, and were going about doing the same old thing. Luke 12 verses 58 to 59, KJV, When thou goest with thine adversary to the magistrate, as thou art in the way, give diligence that thou mayest be delivered from him, lest he hail thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and the officer cast thee into prison. I tell thee, thou shalt not depart thence, till thou hast paid the very last mite. Thine adversary, Israel's adversary. 1 Peter 5 verse 8. The magistrate, officer of the court. The judge, God is their judge. The twelve apostles will also sit on twelve thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Matthew 19 verse 28 KJV. 
And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me, in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. The officer cast thee into prison, angels cast unbelievers into hell, also referred to as a prison. Revelation 20 verse 15 KJV And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Thou shalt not depart thence, till thou hast paid the very last might. Jesus uses a reference to debtor's prison to ask them why they don't understand the consequences of disobeying his preaching. 